Hi, I'm Griffin McRoy from Polygon. You might know me from any number of video series in which I play games in a way that could be described both as bad and wrong. Well, sometimes I like to play games normal and good too. I'm talking about those good games, and 2016 had a lot of those good games in it. This intro's kind of gotten away from me already. I want to tell you about five of my favorite games from 2016, which I'm going to present in no particular order, except for this first game, which is in fact my favorite game of 2016. My number one favorite game of 2016 is hands down Stardew Valley. Uh, Stardew Valley is admittedly, it kind of falls into my favorite genre of games, which is this just chill ass life sim uh, with, with sort of RPG and, and customization elements. I'm a big fan of the Animal Crossing series and I'm a big fan of the Harvest Moon series. Um, although the Harvest Moon series has not been so great in recent years. And what I really love about Stardew Valley is that the uh, developer, uh, Concerned Ape, also kind of recognized that that franchise and kind of that, that genre uh, was going downhill. And so uh, they, they went out to make a game that fixes uh, all of its problems and also like adds these modern improvements uh, that really enhance the experience. Stardew Valley is a, a sort of a farming RPG with so much depth and so many uh, customization options and so much to do uh, in, in during any given day. You can go out and forage for materials and uh, go, go sell them for money or use them to upgrade buildings uh, on your farm. Uh, you can, of course, plant crops. You can use your tools to harvest those crops or go upgrade those tools using ore that you uh, collected from the mines. You can go talk to the many, many villagers in the town, some of which you can marry and start families with. Uh, and you can find out like the right gifts to give those people. You can start cooking. Uh, there are so many things to do in, in Stardew Valley. Uh, and all of it is just really thoughtfully presented and really, really, uh, just really compelling. I could not stop playing Stardew Valley. I put a crazy amount of time into it. Uh, and uh, the, the game is supposed to be uh, updated to come to console sometime soon. God, I can't stop thinking about if this thing ends up on like 3DS or Vita or on the Nintendo Switch. Like I might just disappear for a while. And it's a game that I think I'm gonna replay like so much uh, throughout the rest of my life. Like it's one of those games that earns future nostalgia. And for that reason, it was my favorite game of 2016. One of my other favorite games this year was Overwatch, uh, which is kind of surprising. Like, obviously I knew that Blizzard knew how to make one hell of a game, and they're also kind of known for coming into these genres and and making improvements and sort of making the best games that those genres have, have ever seen. Um, but I, I used to play a lot of competitive shooters, and I've sort of fallen out of the genre uh, because I found that like it's hard for me to stay competitive in any shooter. Uh, Overwatch is really a really, really well-designed game that is really inviting to people of all skill levels. Uh, it is a game in which you don't need to know how to be the best Overwatch player ever to have a good time. You just need to know how to play your hero correctly. Uh, and that's something that I really, really dig. And obviously there's so much variety between the uh, between the different heroes. It's not like, oh, you're not good at shooting. Well, play the medic class. There's like six. There's like a bunch of different medic classes to choose from. Um, and there's so many different support options uh, too. I think it's such a tricky needle to thread to make it feel like you are contributing to your team regardless of what your skill level is. And I think Overwatch like nails that better than maybe any other shooter ever has. Uh, I definitely have some issues with the game. I still think the progression hooks are pretty lame. Uh, I'm not exactly like on my grind to get new sprays and voice lines, uh, which is like all I get in my boxes nowadays. Um, but I think the, so the, the, the core game is so good and how much they've added, even just in this, this year, this short period that the game's been out, uh, it, it paints a pretty bright future for this already really terrific game. Another one of my favorite games is uh, The Witness on PS4, uh, which is another game that kind of gripped me and wouldn't let me go, which I wasn't really expecting. I've been, I've been looking forward to it for a long time. I was a huge fan of Braid, uh, but I, I stayed kind of mostly in the dark uh, about The Witness, and I was sort of unsure about it. Uh, but man, once this game gets its hooks in you, it does not let go. What I think is really incredible about The Witness is it has uh, a, one fairly simple, like, 
interaction mechanic that it carries throughout the entire game. So like in a, uh, fr from a design philosophy standpoint, like that's really impressive. But what I really love is by the time you reach sort of the last few chunks of the game, you are combining like a dozen different puzzle mechanics and a dozen discrete rules, some of which like contradict each other to solve these really, really uh, complex puzzles. But, but what's amazing about The Witness is it takes its time like teaching you those rules, even though, and, and showing you like where they contradict and layering more and more and more and more rules uh, on top of this one single mechanic. So that by the time you do reach those really difficult puzzles, you have everything you need to, to, to conquer them. Um, some of my most satisfying moments playing a game this year wasn't like beating that really hard boss in Dark Souls 3, uh, which was another really terrific game. It was figuring out these puzzles and solving some of the really, really tough puzzles in, in The Witness. It was also just like a drop dead gorgeous game. Uh, and I just, man, I loved every second I spent with it. Well, maybe not every second. A few of those puzzles really, really boned me. Uh, I also really loved Fire Emblem Fates. I've been a huge fan of this franchise for a while and I love SRPGs like this. Uh, it was also one of just like a small handful of uh, handheld games that, that came out this year that I got really into. Uh, others including Pokemon Sun and Moon and uh, Picross 3D2 or whatever it's called. Uh, Fire Emblem Fates though is a really deep strategy RPG uh, with some really great, really memorable characters and a lot of really charming writing, like a ton of writing. Uh, all of the different support conversations that can happen between all of the different characters in the game that will converse. It, it gave the game a sense of uh, uh, of character and life that uh, a, a lot of other games that I played this year sort of lacked. Um, I really like the castle customization element of uh, Fire Emblem Fates, although I wish it was just a little bit more robust. I wasn't so sold by the three different campaigns just because uh, I played through two of them and just couldn't work up the interest to, to, to play the game a third time uh, in one year. But uh, I, I think I'll probably get back to it at some point because I just, I really loved playing this game. And my last game on the list is Hyper Light Drifter. Uh, which is sort of another game that oozes style. It has this pixelated aesthetic, which you hear me say that and think like, oh, it's, you know, it's, it's supposed to be modeled after some retro game. No, it's, it's unlike any aesthetic I've ever seen in any game, pixelated or otherwise. Uh, it had this great soundtrack from, from Disaster Piece. Uh, and it was just a good action game. Uh, it's built around these like pretty small micro loops where you walk into a room you got some enemies, you got your dash button, you got a sword, you got uh, different guns that you can equip, and you just have to sort of dash and slash and shoot your way uh, through these different combat arenas. Um, and the game's just gonna kill you over and over and over again. You've only got five hit points, it's just gonna kill you over and over and over again. But every time it does, you learn a little bit more about how to best sort of conduct this like ballet through this, this one arena. And then by the time that you're able to beat it, you do, you pull off this combo of like last second dodges and reversals and 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 parries and attacks and shots um, that just looks so sick every time you do it. Every, every like 10 minutes of this game has one of those like unforgettable fights. Uh, it also has some really, really difficult and really rewarding boss fights that I loved. And this like overwhelming sense of dread like your character is slowly dying throughout the whole game uh, which is not a, a place that a lot of games go so um i i just really loved the package that that this game put together and it's one that uh, more than any other game i played and, and finished this year it's one that i just keep returning to So those are my five favorite games of 2016. It was a pretty great year for games, uh, and there were a lot of games I, I considered before I put them on this list. So uh, I know I probably left one of your favorite games, maybe your all time top number one game from 2016 off my list. Uh, and if that's the case, just make sure to leave a comment somewhere else. <laughs> go right, go right, go right. We're going to the beach. Actually, you can go to the blacksmith too, if you want. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah, I do think so. Uh, that bridge down south is to the beach, but I want you to go to that, that there blacksmith first. He's over here, right? He is? <laughs> That's not a, more questioning than I would have liked. 